Okay, so I'm going to respond to a video now, and what I don't normally like to do is to prejudge these things. I like to just say what I have to say and then leave it to the viewer to decide, each and every one of them for themselves, whether they think the arguments that I've made are better than the arguments that I'm rebutting. That's the way to do things normally. Okay, so what I ought to say is that this is a video response to Frank Turek, PhD, albeit a PhD in apologetics from the Southern Evangelical Seminary, which in my view is worth less than no PhD at all. But that's what I ought to say. What I'm actually going to say is that this is a fucking demolition job. But before we enter the uh, demolition zone and I ask you to put your hard hats on, just a little aside here, because Frank Torek wrote a book in 2004, and the book is entitled, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. Imagine I wrote a book myself, and I called it something like, Christians have too much good science on their side for me to become a Christian. You'd think, well, I thought you thought science was a good thing, Jim, so why would you not become a Christian because they've got too much good science on their side? I thought the likes of Frank Turek thought faith was a good thing, a noble thing, something that's aspirational, not something to be slightly embarrassed about. So maybe what we're really hearing in that title is just a little bit of an insight in how Frank really thinks about faith. Okay, so let me get on with the video. Let me play you Frank Turek. But before I do, just let me say one last thing, which is that, you know, when you hear a video speak, just as you're hearing me speak now, there's three things you hear. One, yes, there's the arguments themselves. But there's also a betrayal of the prejudices and the biases of the person making the video. And then finally... And most importantly, perhaps, it tells you something about how they perceive the intended audience. And, and, and when you think of it in those terms, what it does tell you is just what a low perception Frank must have of the people that he expects to watch and be influenced by his video. OK, let's start with a bit of Frank now. Let's crack on with it. Hard hats at the ready. And then I wanted to cover the issue of uh, do atheists just lack a belief in God? Let me just say a few words about this because I don't think it's a very good way to describe atheism. Because if atheism is merely a lack of belief in God, then atheism is just a claim about the atheist state of mind. It's not a claim about God's existence. And doesn't the same apply to theism? Theism is a belief in a God or God. So isn't theism... Uh, more about the individual's state of mind than it is about whether a god or gods actually exists. This is just some semantic bullshit word game that Frank Turek is playing now. Most of these isms, most words, whether we're talking about, I don't know, nihilism, non-cognitivism, uh, socialism, all these things when we're talking about what it means to be a nihilist, a socialist, blah, blah, blah. It's talking about people's states of minds, their beliefs, what they hold to be true. So fucking what? Why does that make them bad definitions? We need to understand what people's beliefs are. That's why we have these words, so that we can put a tag on people's beliefs, so we don't have to give it all longhand every single time that we want to write something down, or every single time we want to have a conversation. I really don't know what his point is here. Let's go back to Frank, see how he elaborates on it. It's basically saying, the atheist is saying, I, he's saying, I'm, I'm psychologically or I'm not psychologically convinced that God exists. Well, so what? That offers no evidence for or against God. You see, most people lack a belief in unguided evolution, yet no atheist would say that that shows that evolution is false. So this is not a it's not a good definition of atheist to say I just lack a belief in God. You know, this argument is just a fucking mess from beginning to end. What he's saying now is that, there's, is that lack of belief in God is a poor definition for atheism because it doesn't include the evidence. It doesn't demonstrate the validity of the claim. It just tells you what a person's position is. I don't know. I don't know. I cannot think of a single, a single example in the whole of the English language where the, the term that's used to describe somebody's state of mind actually evidences the validity of the claim. If anybody can come up with a single example, theism certainly isn't an example, is it? The belief in God. How can, how can the belief 
in a god or gods be a suitable definition for theism because it doesn't evidence the existence of a god does it so if it doesn't evidence the existence of a god how can that be a good definition uh, it just it's just garbled bollocks i'm afraid it's an absolute load of codswallop and, and that's probably the first time i think i've used the word codswallop for about 20 years now i just i just cannot fathom the depths of this guy's understanding that he thinks that that is a good argument for why it's a, if it's a bad definition of atheism then that's every every descriptor for people's states of mind that he's arguing with not just the word atheism another reason that atheism is not just a lack of belief in god is because if you just if you if you say that's what atheism is or that's what an atheist is then rocks trees and outhouses are all atheists too because they lack a belief in god <laughs> you sneaky, insincere bastard! Did anybody else notice the trick that he pulled there? As if you just, if you, if you say that's what atheism is, or that's what an atheist is. Then... Yeah, so it gives us a definition of atheism, but then slides the conversation across to talk about atheists without changing the definition. It's like talking about sociopathy. I'm assuming that would be another word that he'd have exactly the same issue with, because sociopathy means a a, a lack of a sense of moral responsibility so then obviously a sociopath uh, is a rock or a tree that lacks a sense of moral responsibility well no because if you look at the definition of a sociopath it is a person who lacks a sense of moral responsibility so whereas atheism might be a lack of a belief in a god or gods atheist look the fucking definition up for yourself if you don't believe me frank is a person who lacks a belief in a god or god so there's only two possibilities here one is that frank cut three possibilities one is that frank considers trees and rocks to be people the other is that he's just never bothered checking up the definition of atheist or the third is that he's just an insincere cunt i'm afraid i'll leave you to decide which one of those three is true let's move on with a little bit more frank this claim that atheists just lack a belief in god is that the atheist is really trying to avoid the burden of proof uh, the old burden of proof chestnut yeah, i get the kind of impression that this is what this is all about. All this terribly mangled, garbled load of bullshit argument that Frank's making. It's really because he doesn't want atheists to be able to get themselves off the hook. He wants them to provide for him some positive reasons uh, to think that a god or, or gods do not exist. Which is kind of strange because he spends most of the rest of his video complaining that atheists are providing these other things. Uh, so, so why is that concerned about this issue when atheists apparently are all doing these things anyway? I'm not really sure. But let's just look at, let's just quickly explore this idea of burden of proof. The reason that we have to have some kind of burden of proof is that otherwise people can just keep plucking things out of their asses. I can say, Frank, space goblins exist on the planet Mars. And then he has to go out there and do the legwork to demonstrate that there are no space goblins on Mars. And then I say, well, that's because they've been eaten by the subterranean space octopi. And then so he's got to then go and prove that there are no subterranean space octopi on Mars. So it doesn't really make any sense, does it? And so when you talk about a God claim, you arrive at the same kind of position. I think there are two slight differences. If you're talking about the most generic form of deism as, a, as an explanation for the origin of everything that we know, and place that alongside all the other uh, all the other explanations that have been given, that's all, all very much up in the air. And I think that therefore you, you can put things on a slightly more equal footing. But when you're talking about the specifics of any religious faith, when you're talking about a God who doesn't like great apes masturbating in their bedrooms, doesn't like anybody cooking a baby goat in its mother's milk, and doesn't like an ox and an ass put on the same yoke, that's a very different, that's a very specific set of things that you're bringing to the table and so i think there it behooves you to demonstrate it not for me to demonstrate that it's wrong but from a practical level if 
if 50% or 80% or 90% of the adult population really believed that Santa Claus actually existed, then whilst I could claim as, a, as a, an a-Santa Clausist that, that they have the burden of proof proving it, well, of course I'm going to give the arguments. I'm going to explain how it's absolutely impossible that you could drop down everybody's chimney all around the world, especially with modern chimney, modern fire breasts that aren't large enough to go down. Of course I'm going to give those arguments, and that's why atheists end up giving those arguments. The funny thing in this video is that Frank criticises atheism on the grounds that it doesn't provide positive arguments, and then he criticises atheists for giving those fucking positive arguments so let's kind of get on to some of that material but that's just not so why because atheists are always trying to give alternatives to the theistic worldview they try and say well maybe the quantum vacuum brought the universe into existence of course that some atheists, some atheists tend to do things above and beyond simply lacking a belief in God doesn't mean all those things have to be incorporated into the definition of atheism. Not all atheists bother spending their time making these kinds of arguments. I'll tell you something that all atheists do. All atheists shit. All atheists like to go to the toilet and have a damn good crap. But that doesn't mean that defecation has to be incorporated into the definition of atheism because it isn't fucking relevant. What's the definition of theist? The definition of theist is somebody who has a belief in God or gods. Theists do lots of things besides. Lots of theists pray. Lots of theists traditionally have waged holy wars on other theists. Do we have to incorporate these things into the definition of theist? No, we don't. A theist is somebody who has a belief in a God or gods. An atheist is somebody who lacks a belief in God or God. So whatever else they may choose to do, they can choose to do, but those things do not have to be incorporated into the definition of atheist or theist. What a load of shite Frank Turek is talking here. Come up with positive beliefs that atheistic materialism is the best way to explain reality. In other words, atheists don't lack a belief in materialism. They're not skeptical of materialism. They think that materialism is true. What atheists need to do is they need to make a positive case that only material things exist. You see, the point is, is that when an atheist says that he just lacks a belief in God, he doesn't really just lack a belief in God. He is saying positive things about the world. He's saying everything's made of materials. Well, give me evidence that everything's made of materials. So this, Frank, this is the reason why atheists love this definition. It's not because they want to avoid the burden of proof. It's because they want to avoid people like you just incorporating more and more things into atheism that don't apply to all atheists. I have to I have to be honest here and say, admit that some atheist groups have tried to do exactly the same thing, whether it's social justice issues or appeals to lofty scientific ways of thinking that certainly don't apply to all atheists. We've done the same thing ourselves. Many of us reject that wholeheartedly. What you're trying to smuggle in is materialism. Your claim here, and I segued three clips of Frank together there, was that materialism is an intrinsic component of atheism. That is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Let me show you the statistics to prove it. Here is the results of a YouGov poll in the UK of 63,000 people. 19% of them subscribe to the atheistic position. I do not believe there is a God or gods or any other spiritual power. But 10% subscribe to the atheistic position. I do not believe in a God, but do believe in some higher spiritual power. So that's about a third of those respondents there. A third of those respondents didn't believe in a god or gods and they felt fairly certain about that that they do believe in a spiritual power. Frank Turek is just erasing them from atheism. He's erasing 370 million Buddhists who do believe in the immaterial from atheism. But it would be remiss of me at this point not to just uh, tackle the general argument that Frank is making here, which you probably won't have got from that clip. But the general argument seems to be that he's saying that atheists are materialists and they need to prove materialism. If some things exist uh, outside of the materialistic idea that non-material things exist, that in some ways that evidences 
the existence of his God. I don't know how one follows from the other any more than the existence of a material thing like this mug demonstrates the existence of the space goblins on Mars that I was talking about. Even if we accept that some things that aren't material exist, even if we reject materialism, in no ways does that evidence his God. Let me give you an example of that. Let's say, for example, that I accept that concepts exist, right? That concepts exist and they are not a material phenomenon. Well, then in a way that his God exists, his God exists as a concept, as does every other god that's ever been uh, dreamt up, that, that we haven't forgotten about, because once they're forgotten about, the concept has gone. But every god that's still known about exists as a concept. But a concept doesn't have agency. A concept cannot perform work. A concept cannot interfere or intervene with the universe. The god that Frank Turek believes in is not a concept, it is a sentient agent that has agency, that does things, that can carry things out, that can think, that can act, that can play a role. I can show you examples of material things that have agency. I wonder if Frank Turek can give me one example of an immaterial phenomena that has agency. He does give some examples of what he considers to be immaterial phenomena that I'd like to specifically look at. So let's have a look at those now. Mind and consciousness. How do you explain that from a materialistic perspective? How do you explain free will from a materialistic perspective? What do you say? It's an illusion like Daniel Dennett? Okay, well, I'm not going to go through my whole thoughts on free will. I'll link to a video on that where I embellish and, and, and explain my understanding uh, of, of how I see things, but I'm a pessimistic incompatibilist. I don't believe that free will exists. I think it's a kind of nonsense concept, if you like, because whether the universe is deterministic, if the universe is deterministic, there's no free will, but I don't see how indeterminism helps either. That's just randomness. I don't see how that makes the will any freer. But the important thing is, is that Frank Turek gives this idea of free will as a question, as a problem for the materialist. But how does the invocation of a spiritual realm, how does the invocation of dualism help at all? It just kind of knocks it back at a level. It just says, well, we can't explain it in the, in the physical realm, but it's explained in the spiritual realm. But these same problems that only determinism and indeterminism, they are the two Logical possibilities and neither of them seem to allow any space for free will so the same problems that he's bringing to my table I'm going to bring to his table how does the invocation of a spiritual realm and of a deity have any bearing whatsoever on the question of free will objective morality where does that come from how about evil well, again, as I did with, with uh, Free Will, I'll link to a video where I outline my position uh, with regards to morality, which could give some grounds for objectivity. But the point is that most atheists don't sit in, the, in, in that particular camp. They are not moral objectivists. They're subjectivists. They're relativists. They don't believe in an objective uh, moral meta ethical theory so you know when i said at the beginning that the way that you the way that you come across in your video betrays a lot about your intended audience his intended audience these are the christians and it doesn't show well for what he must think about them that he's bringing through things like this of course his audience believes in objective morality but he knows that most atheists don't so why is he expecting them to account for something that they don't ask to believe in it's like me asking him to to account for the hindu god shiva he's going to say i don't have to because i don't believe that shiva exists of course one thing i could do is throw his own question back to him and say look how does the invocation of a deity objectify morality how does it give you an an objective grounding to your morality he's probably going to say something like divine command it's whatever god says is moral is moral but here's the question and it's a question that i've asked a thousand times and i've never had even a half satisfactory answer to it is how does deistic decree objectify divine command in other words even if god is omniscient and omniscient and omnipotent how does him saying something is so objectively make it so i've never had an answer to that maybe that's one that frank could tackle with regard to the subject of evil when frank talks about evil and when the people he's talking to or talking at 
talk about evil they mean it as something almost something tangible like some kind of virus that things can be infected with evil the same way as they could be possessed by some kind of demon uh, but most atheists every atheist i've ever met in fact doesn't talk about evil in that kind of sense we're not using it as a noun we're using it as an adjective to describe how we feel about things i talk about acts being evil i talk about uh, individuals being evil i don't talk about evil Right, and what I mean is that's me giving my uh, opinion on on things that I don't think are good things to do, things that I think are immoral things to do, or people who I hold to be immoral. So this is an entire red herring on Frank's part, and I think it betrays how he feels about his audience. Let's have one last clip of Frank before we sum up. You see, atheism ultimately is self-defeating. Materialistic atheism, it's self-defeating. There's no way to know atheism is true if it really is true. Because if atheism is really true, then we're not really reasoning anyway. We're just reacting. Well, you know, this sounds suspiciously like some kind of rewrap of, of Alvin Plantinga's uh, uh, evolutionary argument against uh, naturalism. And... I, <laughs> I've got several problems with this. For a start, he says, what he's saying is, well, if, uh, if atheism is true, we've no way of knowing for certain that atheism is true. But that in no way falsifies the atheist position. In no way uh, means that, well, in that case, therefore, God must exist. In any, in any way, I don't know how many times Queen Victoria picked her nose in a lifetime. It's not documented, so there's no way that any of us can know how many times Queen Victoria picked her nose in a lifetime, but there will be a finite number of times that Queen Victoria nevertheless picked her nose in her lifetime. And the fact that we can't necessarily definitively say that doesn't mean that that number doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that any number that we could arrive at would necessarily be wrong. And that's just the case here. The fact that atheism perhaps means that if it's true, that there is no philosophical bedrock in which we can absolutely certainly say that atheism is true doesn't fall in any way falsify atheism. The other problem, and it's the problem that I had with Plantinga's argument, is that effectively it's an appeal to global scepticism because there is no reason that, that the invocation of a god changes anything, even if you believe that there's a god. That doesn't mean that your cognitive faculties are reliable. That's what Turek is saying here is if atheism is true, our cognitive faculties could be unreliable. But if theism is true, our cognitive faculties could be uh, unreliable. Even if God says, oh, no, 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 mate, your cognitive faculties that I've given you, they're absolutely reliable. There is no way to differentiate between a God claiming to have given you reliable cognitive faculties that has given you cognitive, reliable cognitive faculties and a God claiming to give you reliable cognitive faculties that hasn't given you reliable cognitive faculties faculties so you're in the same epistemologically shite position whether you're a theist or an atheist that's something that we've all just got to come to terms with and nothing that he said in any of this dire video has gone any way towards addressing any of that i don't know really what frank's problem um with with the word atheist is but if he has those problems this is my suggestion to us to him just give us another word just give us a word which means lack of a belief in god and we'll use that word instead because what we need is simply a word that's going to say these are the people that are not theists these are the people that do not believe in god well i'm sorry this video has gone on for as long as it has i invite you I invite you, I challenge you to watch the original video and see if you could have made a response that was any fucking shorter than this one. Well, thank you for watching if you've got to the end. And bye for now.